course, the One Asia Community in Cross-Cultural Dialogue with Europe takes place in Spain at Complutense University in Madrid, funded by the One Asia Foundation. Complutense is one of the oldest universities in the world, located in the capital of Spain. It enrolls almost 90,000 students with over 200 degrees and doctoral programs, 30 libraries and one of the most extensive archive collections in Europe. It has provided invaluable contributions in the sciences, fine arts and political leadership, including seven Nobel Prize winners and continuing to rank among the top universities in the world. The university has institutions abroad to foster intellectual and scientific interaction, including the Real Colegio Complutense at Harvard University and the Collège des Etudes Européennes at Sorbonne. The course, the One Asia Community in Cross-Cultural Dialogue with Europe, trains the students in intercultural dialogue between Asia and Europe. It is embedded in the research program Studies on Intermediality as Intercultural Mediation. SIIM, hosted at Complutense University. SIM research program has developed projects with the European Union, with the Spanish Ministry of Education, Madrid local government, local NGOs, and research groups worldwide. SIM focuses on theory, method, and application, looking at cultural expressions as connected to and dependent on other forms, situations, and activities of human expression. Support from the One Asia Foundation to Complutense has enabled the creation of a specialized seminar to train students in great degrees in cross-cultural awareness. The course also makes students more aware of Asian values in general and of the values of the One Asia Foundation in particular. In 2017, the course hosted 23 lectures, each have sought to explore the differences and similarities between Eastern and Western worldviews. The philosophy of Chairman Sato has been fundamental in inspiring students and professors to see how cross-cultural education serves communities at all levels, personal, local, national and international. Invited experts have contributed towards the topic of cross-cultural communication from disciplines such as cultural anthropology, political science, history, geography, communication theory, semiotics, language differences, forms of cognitive processing, artistic expressions, and so on. The recognition of culture as a form of semiotic transference paves the way to same study of interculturalism in education. Each culture has its own traditions, and they include specific forms of social communication and representation that preserve historical memory. Communication serves to establish connections among people by means of particular signs, codes and media. Semiotic deals with the study and interpretation of signs, and in its global dimension it implies the study of cross-cultural communication and representation. The recognition of culture as a form of semiotic transference paves the way for the study of interculturalism in education. Semiotics deals with the study of interpretation of signs, indexes, icons, symbols, both in artificially constructed languages, mathematical languages, computer codes, etc., and in natural languages, human discourse. In its more global dimension, semiotic implies the study of cross-cultural communication and representation. Semiotics determines, enables, and constrains what is perceived and attended to in a culture. Each culture has its own semiotic traditions. These include specific forms of social communication and representation that preserve historical memory. For example, as a result of semiotic differences, people in different cultures perceive, think, communicate and behave differently. While in the West, people rely on different forms of verbal communication, many Asian cultures prefer indirect forms which rely more on gestures and body language. 70% of any message is conveyed through words, 38% through certain vocal elements, and 55% through nonverbal elements, facial expressions, gestures, posture, etc. Body language, nonverbal communication, serves the following purposes, expresses emotions, expresses interpersonal attitudes, and accompanies the speech in managing interaction, cues between speakers and listeners, conveys personal information about the speaker's personality, 
and it is used in rituals such as greetings. Attention is captured by faces, faces and face recognition. Eye contact focuses on attention on in nonverbal communication. The term deixis means to point, show, display, also make reference to and demonstrate. Cognitive deixis localizes objects and people in shared space and time, that is the present normally. Discursive deixis localizes uh, people and objects in non-shared space and time through memory, narrative and uh, relating to past, present and future. Communication requires the consciousness of more than one subject. It is intersubjective. Intercultural and cross-cultural communication and representations point to the effort of crossing over and meeting other cultures. But what is culture? The concept of culture incorporates aspects shared by communities such as customs, ethos, values, and so on, including the forms by means of which these aspects are represented in art, architecture, scientific theories, etc. American anthropologist and cross-cultural researcher Edward Hall explored how people behave and react in different types of culturally defined personal space. In his second book, The Hidden Dimension, he describes the culturally specific temporal and spatial dimensions that surround us, such as the physical distances people maintain in different cultures. For instance, in Asian cultures, uh, they need greater physical space than Western cultures. In 1976, Hall released his third book, Beyond Culture, in which he developed ideas about high-context cultures and low-context cultures. High-context cultures are cultures that rely heavily on non-verbal and subtle situational cues in communication. Uh, in these cultures, communication is indirect, meaning, meaning it's also indirect, is normally implied or derived from context, and it is difficult to, to infer uh, interests among the people. Implied meanings arrive from the setting and nonverbal cues are very important. Words help to create a harmony between speakers so that conflict is avoided. And normally they say no without using the word no. Um, this is normally linked to collective cultures where uh, which have a high hierarchy and forms of spirit logic in reasoning. On the other side, low-context cultures are cultures that rely heavily on words to convey meaning in communication. And so words communicate information directly. Literal meanings are independent of the setting and the context, and they are clear. The words are clear. Um, a cl conflict is okay. Uh, they don't avoid conflict in these cultures. And they can say no easily. And normally is linked to in more individualistic cultures, uh, where uh, they are less hierarchical, more democratic, and they use linear logic. Hall also points out differences in language uh, use across cultures. For example, the word uh, private does not exist as a word in many languages. Uh, another example is Eskimos have over 15 terms for the English word for snow. And words which describe moral concepts um, are unique to certain countries or areas. For example, the term face uh, has special meanings in Asian cultures. Velvet language precision is important in low context cultures and in high context cultures, non verbal language and gestures are more important. Hall also presented the idea of the extension transference. Uh, that is, any technological item, from clothes to laptops, that help us perform certain functions, some of them cultural. These extensions give us a certain identity in building different types of relationship. And you have an example there of clothing in your screen. The term culture originates uh, from ancient Latin. Initially, it referred to cultivation of land, indicating a system of shared codes and patterns that help humans settle in particular environments during the Neolithic period. Although originally this pattern focused on land organization, the word cultivated maintains a meaning that refers to a way of thinking and living in agreement with normative and instructional aspects. More recently, the concept of culture has come to add 
different aspects uh, related to um, sharing uh, in the group and community. For example, background, civilization, customs, ethnicity, ethos, philosophy, traditions, values, and so on. And all these forms um, are related to representation uh, through art, literature, music, architecture, scientific theories, and so on. According to anthropologist John Botley, uh, we can contemplate culture from all these perspectives. From the topical, culture consists of everything on a list of topics, categories such as social organization, religion, or economy. From a historical perspective, culture is a soci is social heritage, tradition that is passed on to future generations. From the behavioral aspect, culture is shared, learned human behavior, a way of life. From the normative aspect, culture are ideas, values, and rules for living. Uh, in terms of functionality, culture is the way humans solve problems of adaptation to the environment. Uh, from the perspective of mental cognitive, culture is a complex of ideas and learned habits um, that uh, guide impulses and distinguish people from animals. Uh, from the structural perspective, culture consists on patterns and interrelated ideas, symbols, behaviors, and so on. And from the symbolic, culture is based on um, arbitrarily assigned meanings that are shared by society. Intercultural and cross-cultural communication and representations point to the effort of crossing over and meeting other cultures. This effort becomes particularly significant when exploring the differences between Eastern and Western worldviews. Since the late 1800s, anthropologists have given different definitions to the term culture. And the first one on your screen is from Primitive Culture by Sir Edward Burnett Taylor. Culture is that complex whole which includes knowledge, belief, art, morals, law, custom, and any other capabilities and habits acquired by man as a member of society. The second definition by Robert Hall calls, culture is an integrated system of learned behavior patterns that are characteristics of members of a given society. Culture refers to the total way of life of a particular group of people. It includes everything that a group of people thinks, says, does, and makes. It's customs, language, material artifacts, and shared systems of attitudes and feelings. Culture is learned and transmitted from generation to generation. For Edward Hall, uh, writing in the silent language, culture stands for the way of life of a people, the sum of their learned behavioral patterns, attitudes, and material things. For Kruber and Kluckholm, culture consists in pattern ways of thinking, feeling, and reacting, acquired and transmitted mainly by symbols, constituting the distinctive achievements of human groups, including their embodiments in artifacts. The essential core of culture consists of traditional ideas and especially their attached values. The study of intercultural relationships is also very relevant to communities of international professionals, migrant workers, international enterprises, and so on. Gerd Hofstede, who worked for IBM as a psychologist between 1967 and 73, studied over 100,000 IBM employees covering 72 national subsidiaries and 38 occupations, 20 languages. And he uh, developed a number of surveys that were taken those years um, in which he was, he was trying to explore how, uh, from a cultural perspective, the different organizational structures, particularly with regard to the uh, global expansion of uh, IBM. So for Hofstede, culture is the collective programming of the mind which distinguishes the members of one group from another. Another researcher in the area of uh, enterprises, uh, Maria Axner, uh, defines culture as referring to a group or community which shares common experiences that shape the way its members understand the world. It includes groups that we are born into, such as race, national origin, gender, class, or religion. 
It can also include a group we join or become part of. For example, it is possible to acquire a new culture by moving to a new country or region, and by a change in our economic status, or by becoming disabled. When we think of culture this broadly, we realize we're all, we all belong to many cultures at once. Continuing with uh, researchers from the area of culture, leadership and organizational structures, uh, Doman Loom uh, defines culture as the way of life of a society and life patterns related to conduct or ways of behavior, beliefs, traditions, values, art, skills and social relationships. Culture perpetuates the sharing of ideas, attitudes, values and beliefs among individuals of that culture. Edward Schein um, uh, thinks that culture is a set of bas basic assumptions, shared solutions to universal problems of external adaptation, how to survive, and inter internal integration, how to stay together, which have evolved over time and are handed down from one generation to the next. And finally, Brislin says that um, culture involves ideals, values, and assumptions about life that are widely shared among people and that guide our specific behaviors. Therefore, cultural differences operate at various levels. For example, the nation, the organization, including corporate culture and professional culture, or the group of various kinds. Among the elements that contribute to the creation of culture, the physical environment, the history of the group, institutional uh, institutions, family, religion, education, work environment, as well as mass communication media. Meanings are processes that occur in a variety of combinations that include cultural, ethnic, gender and class aspects. People come from many different backgrounds nowadays and contemporary identities are made up of a repertoire of features which are mobilized and converted into speaking positions with performative Actional power. There are cultural differences that take place, for example, in face to face communication, which is the most affected uh, for people who are to be people. Written communication is the most affected for people who are to do people. And of course, trust is a key aspect in uh, which takes patience and commitment to build. Um, some of the findings from Edward Hall, for example, in comparing uh, different cultures on your screen, you have Japanese, American and Brazilian, are related to the number of silent periods and the number of conversational overlaps, uh, facial gazing and touching that takes place uh, among different cultures. As you can see, for example, um, the number of silent periods is much higher in Japan, uh, Japanese culture than in Brazilian. And also the conversational overlaps uh, are much lower, uh, whereas uh, the Brazilian people, uh, maybe like the Spanish people, interrupt each other much more. Uh, facial gazing, uh, it's very, very low in Japanese culture, whereas in Brazilian culture, uh, it's much higher, as it would be in Spain as well. And the same for touching. Gerd Hofstede, uh, in 1991, also um, uh, described four dimensions of differences across cultures, uh, related to the following. Power distance, individualism versus collectivism, uh, masculine versus feminine cultures, uncertainty avoidance, and long-term versus short-term orientation. So, for example, um, uh, collectivist uh, cultures are China or Spain, whereas individualist cultures are uh, the United States. Uh, power distance, it's also, for example, bigger in some Asian con uh, cultures, where which are much more hierarchical. Um, and regarding long-term and short-term orientation, in the West, we tend to have a short-term orientation where we want to f get things done quicker, whereas in um, Asia, they have a long-term orientation. 10% of cultural content is made up of visible cultural expressions, such as forms of behavior, ways of life, traditions, signs, thoughts, beliefs, ideologies, norms, etc. The largest cultural content, however, 90%,
lies at the bottom of the human mind, embedded in our feelings and emotions, which sustain our core values. In order to teach cross-cultural communication in the classroom, experiential learning is necessary. The classroom can serve as a simulated environment and to learn about others and improve interpersonal competences. As indicated before, our societies are increasingly mobile and multicultural, representing the need for people to understand others who are different from us. Different cultures hold different attitudes and beliefs. So this, the, kind, uh, the kind of understanding across differences in value system re requires positive empathy. So what are cultural values? Cultural values identify behavioral characteristics that members of a society consider important and valuable. They serve as a mechanism of social control by determining how members of a culture should behave. Individual members of one culture may differ in the values and adopt several subcultures. Boundaries are only uh, loosely defined because culture can be shared by people from different geographical locations. So finally, values and systems can change over time. And we also have core values and peripheral values. On your screen, you have um, uh, the cycle of core values. So on your screen, you have um, a list of uh, different values between West and East. Um, so while in Asia, societies are more collectivist, uh, in the West, we tend to be individualistic. Uh, we also focus on achievement while they are more modest. Uh, we promote equality and they have more hierarchical structures. Uh, they focus on harmony and uh, ours is a win-win um, environment. Uh, we focus on internal self-control while they also want the external self-control, the social aspect. For them, it's very important the expression of saving face, you know, pretend, uh, having uh, an image projected onto society. Whereas uh, we, as individuals, uh, are more self centered on pride. Uh, they respect the status and we expect results. Uh, they respect their elders and we respect competence. It doesn't matter the age. Uh, for us, time is money. For them, time is life. Uh, we focus on action and they focus on being. Um, they are more humanistic. We're more systematic. Um, they are more formal and we tend to be more informal. Uh, we're also more assertive and they prefer indirect styles of communication. Um, we think we can control the future and we focus on that and they uh, place a lot of emphasis on their tradition and the past. Um, they have a, a vision uh, about the world which is holistic and ours is more focused on linearity and um, historical. And finally, we mentioned already that we are more verbal whereas they are more um, they focus more on the nonverbal and gestures and the context as well. The sharing of emotionally charged information, that is values, encourages proactive cooperation behaviors. So how do emotions like love, joy, hatred, sadness, fear, shame become charged with positive or negative connotations that can facilitate or prevent intercultural cooperation? So uh, on your screen, you can see the graphic that illustrates all the elements that are required in cross-cultural communication. So one very important aspect we have mentioned is language, the communicative competence, uh, and also the intercultural awareness. So this is why cross-cultural communication is so important, because in this way we know um, how others uh, might be different from us. We also rely on extra linguistic codes, I, as I have mentioned, uh, gestures, um, intonation, and so on. Um, also behavior abilities, how to behave. And if we know, for example, that in Asia, it's very bad manners to sit down with crossing your legs, for example. These are things that uh, are important to know uh, when we are dealing with cross-cultural communication. 
And also, of course, uh, culture values. It's important to know a little bit about that other culture so that we don't make false assumptions. And all this, of course, is related also to um, uh, empathy and the role of emotions. Contemporary global societies present the need for people to understand others who they may find not only very different from themselves, but also holding attitudes and beliefs which may be difficult to accept. This kind of understanding across differences in value systems requires positive empathy. How do emotions like love, joy, hatred, sadness, fear, shame, and so on become charged with positive or negative connotations that can facilitate or prevent intercultural cooperation. The fundamental reason for the importance of emotions in all areas of our lives is the fact that they are at the core of human experience. The significance of emotions and their impact upon daily life has engaged thinkers for millennia. The earliest medical theories, Egyptian and Mesopotamian, related affective chart changes to deficiencies in the body substances that created emotional imbalances. The Greek physician Hippocrates developed the theory of humors, positing a relation between an excess or lack of any of the four distinct bodily fluids that would presumably influence human temperament. For Aristotle, emotion derived not just from the interactions of body substances, but also from human actions and interactions with the surrounding world. Aristotle understood virtues not just as an essential disposition to act in a certain way, but as a complex mindset that encompasses individual and social desires, values, attitudes, interests, expectations, and so on. Galen of Pergamon based his studies upon Aristotelian and Epicurean sources, and also um, another inspiration was the Persian doctor Im Sina, who related the four elements of the cosmos, earth, water, air, and fire, to sensible qualities, hot, cold, wet, and dry, and to his theory of the four temperaments, which also included the mental aspects of self-awareness and action, as well as emotional and ethical attitudes. So very similar to um, the theory of humors developed by Ibn Sina and also by Hippocrates, uh, is the notion of the five elements uh, in ancient China. Uh, this conceptual scheme was found in the Mavandui silk tests from 168 uh, before Common Era, and is still used to explain a wide array of phenomena such as cosmic circle, cycles, the interaction between internal organs, and so on. Unlike the Greek um, substances, the Vuchin refers to natural processes that relate temporary states in nature and associated patterns of behavior. For example, wood is associated to spring and growth, fire to summer and flowering, earth to late summer and fruition, metal to fall and harvesting, and water to winter retreat and storage. So each phase feeds the next and basis is the basis for a particular directional energy flow between phases. Um, the interactions can be expansive, destructive, or exhaustive. Grounded on Taoism and Buddhism, the Asian cultures of China, Japan, and India view emotions as processes, seeking a balance between positive and negative. However, in Western cultures, the dominant social patterns view them as substances and place emphasis on positive emotions and minimize the negative ones. Emotions are experienced mentally as discrete, consistent, and coordinated sets of responses to internal or external events with a particular significance for the organism, and they are the core of values. These responses range from the physical, facial, verbal gestures, and so on, to unconscious physiological expressions, sweat, pupil dilation, and so etc., 
Persistent emotions might induce particular behavior patterns uh, and action tendencies, for example, shyness or fury. And the mental representations of emotions after they occur are termed feelings. So moods are less intense and diffuse affective states. Emotions are indeed the systems of values, and the process of analyzing one's own values is a prerequisite for understanding others. Students in the One Asia course are envisioned as trees. The branches of the tree are the visible appearance of values. They are shown in the differences and similarities between ourselves and others. Skin, hair, body build, eye color, tastes, everyday habits. The trunk are the observed attitudes, the way people move, their greetings, the way they talk, how they show their emotions. The roots are ingrained cultural values that can be inferred from the appearance and from the observed attitudes and reactions. This can be seen in the video students created with the tree symbol. Values are experienced as emotional energy that finds expressions in the priorities we set and the choices we make. Partly inherited, values are mostly culturally developed in our lifetime, whether consciously or unconsciously. In order to make them evident to us and to others, they need to be transformed into conscious awareness so that in socialization we can align them with those of other peoples. In the case of multicultural groups, this alignment requires specific strategies and skills that need to be learned. Although observing and listening help students to understand, they are not sufficient for the development of empathy and emotional learning. The building of understanding and empathy requires that students learn to shift their frame of reference and position themselves in other people's places. Students learn this through the use of storytelling techniques and in the development of experiential learning projects in the Living Unilab. Thanks to the One Asia Foundation, Complutense students are becoming aware of the philosophy of the One Asia community and ties between Europe and Asia are becoming stronger.